Hello, hi word nerds. We have our sentence surgeon for the week. This one is from the book I Talk Like a River, which is a beautiful book about a boy who feels like he can't speak properly and it makes him very intimidated at first. But um, let's dig into thinking about our parts of speech. I will say this week I am giving you guys to add to your binder. So if you find this wandering loosely in your stuff as holes in it, that means it's supposed to go in your binder. This figurative language flow chart because this um, sentence surgeon does have figurative language in it. We're going to have other sentence surgeons that do have figurative language in it. This can help us figure it out. We are going to reference this later. So um, if you ever struggle with figurative language and figuring it out, this flow chart can be a great help. So we'll bring that back later. Okay, so let's read the sentence. It says, I feel a storm in my belly. My eyes fill with rain. Fill with rain. Okay, if I'm looking at the end of that sentence, it has a period, which means that based on our knowledge that we can also find inside of our notebook, um, this mentor sentence to-do list, we can see the sentence type. So we know declarative sentences end in a period. Let me make sure this is... Right, there we go. Declarative sentences end in a period. Artemis is a great dog. Or imperative sentences end in a period. Or an exclamation point, um, too. Um, but it's a command or an order, like eat your food. All right, so let's look at that. Does it command anybody anything? No, it does not. So this is going to be declarative. All right, and as far as the sentence structure, that is simple, complex, or compound, which we still haven't done a lesson on yet. You just still got to bear with me until we get there. It's going to be a while. But um, these are, this is actually a unique situation because these are two separate ideas, which would usually mean a compound sentence, but there's not a conjunction in the middle. There's not something that connects it other than this symbol right here and this symbol if you see it sometimes, it's like a dot and a comma. That is called a semicolon. And a semicolon is a special type of punctuation that combines ideas without conjunctions a lot of times. Like you, sometimes it can. Like usually I'll use one and then say the word however. Um, that's kind of how I'll use them sometimes. But this book is very similar because if you can already think about the author, they're talking about how they don't feel confident with their speaking. Um, it really kind of reads a little bit more like poetry than a traditional book, and I think that's part of the reason that the sentence is like this. So technically, I think our sentences, our sentence structure is two simple sentences. We have a semicolon. No conjunction. And that is why this is not going to be a um, compound sentence. All right. So let's get into the parts of speech. So I know that I always like to search for nouns first. Those are people, places, or things. So I feel a storm. A storm is a thing. So this is a noun in my belly. A belly is a thing. It's a body part. So that's also a noun. My eyes. That's a thing, but it has an S on the end, so that's called a plural noun, as we've been talking about. Plural noun. Fill with rain. Rain is also a thing, so that is a noun too. I feel a storm in my belly. My eyes fill with rain. Okay, now I'm going to think of what's the action in this sentence. What are things that people can do or animals can do? I feel. Okay, feel is not as obvious of a, an action as something like running or swimming or hitting something. But feeling is an action. It's the way that you behave when you have a thought. It's an action. So this is a verb, but it's one that some of you might have missed and not really thought of being a verb. I feel a storm in my belly. My eyes fill with rain. Filling something is also an action. 
So they're being filled with rain, supposedly. That is also a verb. And we can tell that these are happening right now. So these are actually present tense verbs. Present tense verbs. So remember, it's past, future, or present. And those are happening right now in the sentence. So that's present tense. All right, and do we have any describing words today? I, a, in my, my, with, not really, no, we don't. Okay, so let's look at some of these things. We have I. I is replacing the name of something. Hmm, and we've got a word that replaces the name of something. So, like, we don't know the name of this character right this second while we're doing the sentence version. That is going to be called a pronoun. So let's see if there are any more of those in the sentence like that. So, I feel a in my, ooh. Okay, so instead of saying, like, let's pretend that it's talking about Miss Jordan. Miss Jordan feel a storm in Miss Jordan belly. Well, that's also bad grammar, but my is also a pronoun because it replaces a name. My, so that's there again, pronoun. Fill with rain. Okay, so we have a in and with. A is an article. That's just something you have to memorize. So when you have a, an, or the, those are on our parts of speech notes. So we see down here at the bottom, articles. Help define nouns, the, an, or a. You just have to memorize those three. So that's called an article. Okay, then we have in and with. So in and with are called prepositions, which we have not talked about. And we'll get there eventually. But those of you that remember from last year, a preposition shows the positioning of words to one another. So it's kind of like showing a relationship sometimes. So the storm is in the belly. So even though in isn't like near, far, next to, it is describing like the relationship of the storm and the belly. Same thing with rain. Or, or rain and the eyes. So the eyes and the rain, they have a relationship. So these prepositions are showing that relationship. Position. And we have a preposition down here. Okay, since we have two simple sentences, that means we're going to have two subjects and two predicates. So I'm going to go ahead and split it up. So the subject is what's doing the action, and the predicate is the action. So if I know action, that's a verb, I see verb is feel. What's feeling? Is it the storm or is it I? It's I. I feel. I feel. And then the other one says, my eyes fill with rain. The verb is fill. What's filling? Is it my? Is my fill? Or it's the eyes. Eyes fill. All right, guys, we came up with the whole sentence. Looks like we learned some things today. Bye. Oh, wait, I almost ended the video. I would have been so upset. Oh, man, I almost forgot. Okay, figure your language. Okay, so this author is not really saying that there's a storm in his belly or that his eyes are actually filled with rain. So it's figurative language. We're going to use our figurative language chart to figure out which type. Okay. So is it comparing something? Okay, storm. And rain. I think yes, it can be. Because they are trying to say, they don't have like or as in it. It's not like the, the storm. I felt a storm. Storm as strong, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, it's a Friday afternoon. <laughs> I'm just getting a little tired. It does not have like or as in it. But it does just kind of jump right in and just say that a storm is in the belly. So the storm that's in the belly is like 
frustration and just having an upset tummy. It's like an uncomfortable feeling. So they're combining, they're comparing an upset feeling in the tummy to um, a storm. And we can tell that eyes filling with rain is like tears. So rain, tears to rain. So these are both storm in my belly, fill with rain. This is a metaphor, and this is a metaphor. All right, now we're ready. Bye.